Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has died at the age of 96. Here's the latest on her final moments and a look back at her record-breaking reign. Concerns about Her Majesty's health began to circulate in summer 2022 amid reports of the Queen's declining mobility. Though the Queen was able to attend her Platinum Jubilee celebrations in a limited capacity, the media noted an increased tendency to cancel her involvement in several events, sometimes sending other royals, such as heir to the throne Prince Charles, in her stead. On September 6, Queen Elizabeth officially received departing Prime Minister Boris Johnson at her home in Balmoral, followed by a formal visit from new Prime Minister Liz Truss. It would prove to be one of her final appearances as the United Kingdom's monarch. Two days later, it was announced that the Queen had passed away peacefully at Balmoral. Queen Elizabeth II was born on April 21, 1926. However, throughout her life, Her Majesty actually celebrated two birthdays each year. The two-birthday tradition began more than 250 years ago during the reign of King George II, and the Queen's second birthday, known as the official celebration, falls on the second Saturday of June. Her Majesty began her reign as Queen on Wednesday, February 6, 1952, upon the death of her father, King George VI, who passed away at the age of 56 at Sandringham House following a battle with lung cancer. Because royal tradition states the throne can never be vacant, Princess Elizabeth immediately became the Queen and was informed she had taken over the throne during a trip to Kenya on a Commonwealth tour. At the time, she was just 25 years old. Queen Elizabeth II's coronation took place on Tuesday, June 2, 1953, 16 months after she became the British monarch. The historic ceremony was held at Westminster Abbey and was attended by more than 8,000 distinguished guests. On September 9, 2015, Her Majesty became the longest reigning British monarch, surpassing the previous record set by her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. In January 2020, the Queen's reign hit another important milestone when she moved up to fifth on the list of the world's longest-serving monarchs. The Queen and Prince Philip's earliest known meeting took place in 1934. At the time of their first interaction, Her Majesty was just eight years old and Philip was 15. In 1937, the pair again crossed paths at King George VI's coronation ceremony. Elizabeth II recounted another meeting between the pair in a series of letters she penned the night before her wedding, writing, The first time I remember meeting Philip was at the Royal Naval College, Dartmouth, in July 1939, just before the war. We may have met before at the coronation or the Duchess of Kent's wedding, but I don't remember. The Queen and Prince Philip became secretly engaged in 1946. In November 1947, they married in a lavish wedding ceremony at Westminster Abbey when Her Majesty was just 21 years old. The couple remained married for 73 years until the death of Prince Philip on April 9, 2021. Speaking in 2012, Her Majesty paid a rare public tribute to her husband Philip during her Diamond Jubilee address to Parliament. Prince Philip is, I believe, well known for declining compliments of any kind, but throughout he has been a constant strength and guide. As well as being a doting wife, Queen Elizabeth II was also the loving matriarch of four children, eight grandchildren, and more than ten great-grandchildren. Her Majesty gave birth to her first child, Prince Charles, at the age of 22. The Prince of Wales was born on November 14, 1948, at Buckingham Palace. Two years later, on August 15, 1950, the Queen gave birth to her second child and only daughter, Princess Anne, at Clarence House. On February 19, 1960, the Queen and Prince Philip welcomed their third child and second son, Prince Andrew. Like his older brother, Prince Charles, Andrew was born within the grounds of Buckingham Palace. Elizabeth II's fourth and youngest child, Prince Edward, was born on March 10, 1964. During the birth, the Queen became the first royal woman to have her husband by her side throughout the delivery. Sharing her thoughts on motherhood and royal family life in 1972, the Queen said, if I am asked what I think about family life after 25 years of marriage, I can answer with equal simplicity and conviction, I am for it. <laughs>